Hi everyone, Kate here with just a little pre-Victober book haul. Uh, I will be reading all of these during Victober, but a kind of uh, unintentional tradition that has happened in the lead up to Victober is that I buy Victorian literature uh, to kind of supply me for the next year. Uh, and I don't even always get to it within the next year, but it's fun to get more kind of the ones that are hard to get a hold of. Some of these uh, aren't on Project Gutenberg either, and I want to show you them. So the first is called The Runaway by Elizabeth Anna Hart. And I heard about this from Simon at the Tea or Books podcast. He has a whole blog post where he organizes the Persephone books by publication year um, that they were originally published. And so of course I had my eye on the Victorian titles and the end papers are fabulous for this. Um, and I know that there is a girl who escaped um, from her house and she's a runaway. And then I think, I'm pretty sure another family takes her in. I'm not sure about more than that, but it has this very endearing uh, chart of characters at the front. And then it has a very endearing chart of characters at the back. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to getting to this. I think I might save it for post Victober, just because, you know, you, you have to decide what to prioritize. And I have too many other books that I'm really wanting to prioritize. So these are, this is illustrated by Gwen Ravarat. Um, and I love her illustrations. So that collection of hers is, is growing. And then the next book that I want to show you is called The Fairy Book uh, by um, Dinah Craig. Now it was illustrated by Warwick Goebel um, in the kind of, I think it's the 1920s, this came out, but it's all her text. She translated French fairy tales from Charles Perrault's um, uh, original uh, fairy tales. So um, I just love, look at this. I love the Art Nouveau style of illustrations. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, so I was very excited that this was kind of easy to find out online. One of the uh, scholars that I interviewed for a Victober video told me about this book. Um, so immediately after the interview was done, I checked on eight books and here it was for a reasonable price. Um, and here is the Cinderella picture. I love that so much. So let's see the, uh, I mean, a lot of your kind of greatest hits, fairy tale, Cinderella, or the little glass slipper. Um, Adventures of John Dietrich, never heard of that one. Uh, little One Eye, Little Two Eyes, and Little Three Eyes, Jack the Giant Killer, Tom Thumb, Little Red Riding Hood, Brother and Sister, The Iron Stove, The White Cat, Prince Cherry, Little Snowdrop, The Blue Bird, The Six Swans, and The Juniper Tree, um, and more titles that I didn't read. I don't, you know, I can only get to, um, I don't want to make the video too long, is what I'm trying to say. And the opening title of um, The Sleeping Beauty in the Wood is Once There Was a Royal Couple who grieved excessively because they had no children. When at last, after long waiting, the queen presented her husband with a little daughter, his majesty showed his joy by giving a christening feast, so grand that the like of it was never known. I love the sound of that, and I'm really hoping it will have some whimsical language. I adore fairy tales. So I loved um, that I was able to find that. And then I did show in my Victober announcement video, but. I thought I would show a few more um, uh, of the pictures that are in here. And this does have a ribbon bookmark, which I haven't pulled it out yet, um, but it does have that there. And I love any book with a ribbon uh, bookmark. Okay, here's a great one where they happen upon a skeleton. Um, and let's see here. Here, being chased out of the Admiral Benbow. And, oh yeah, then for each part, there's a big full spread. The Sea Cook Part 2. Here's another one of Long John with his parrot. And, oh, this is a really good one. Part 3, My Shore Adventure. Here's Jim, my sea adventure. So I just think this is a really beautiful edition and I'm so excited to own it. And um, ever since I read Treasure Island, 
I couldn't already couldn't wait to read it aloud to Peter. But my dad has said, I think he'll get the most out of it if you wait until he's 10. So one more Victober to go and I will be reading Treasure Island aloud to Peter. Now, one that I just decided to treat myself, it was Victober announcement video day. And I thought I really have wanted a nice copy of this story ever since I read it last year. I want to do it as a read aloud. So I ordered this gorgeous leather bound copy of The Light Princess. This was published, I think it was 2019 by Rabbit Room Press. Um, and I didn't know, you know, what I was going to think because it was a bit more spendy than I usually do. Uh, but it got here. I'm like, okay, I get why it, why it's just re a really, really nice edition. And Ned Bustard is the illustrator, <clears throat> excuse me, the illustrator. And it also came with a foreword by Jennifer Trafton and an afterword by Andrew Peterson. And both of those were absolutely fabulous. I read them as soon as the book got here. Um, and so here is the kind of style of illustration. So it isn't the you know, type of thing that I would normally gravitate to, but now that I have it, I'm really glad that I have it. Um, and there is the Light Princess floating up there. Yeah, so when I, ever since I read The Light Princess, it just moved me so much, and I thought immediately that I would need a copy to own. And this is a uh, kind of symbolic uh, illustration there, and I honestly can't remember why that is there. So I'll be curious to see it um, as things go on. And then a spoiler, this story has a happy ending. Um, so there are some really nice pictures at the end. This is, you know, later on in the story. And I'm just so delighted to have this. So it just feels so lovely to hold in my hands. The one downside, it doesn't have a ribbon bookmark, but it feels so lovely to have in my hands. And I'm really, really pleased that I, um, that I got this. Okay, the final and the most rare find, another one that I heard about in one of my Victober interviews that I did, um, which will be coming out. And this is a book, the author's name was Helen Mathers. It was her pseudonym. I can't remember her given name. But uh, she wrote a book called Coming Through the Rye. And it's a kind of autobiographical sort of story. And so I heard autobiographical and also that it's just supposed to be really excellent. I had never heard anyone else speak about it. And I went on a books and there was exactly one copy. And so I snapped it up immediately and I was so excited when it came in the condition that it did. So here it is coming up through the rye and look at the gold on the back there. Oh, isn't this stunning? And it's very textured on the cover. I just love it. So I think originally this was probably this color. Um, or even darker, you know, this is probably faded, uh, but maybe sitting on the shelf for so long facing outwards um, like that. It was, it was um, kind of faded so much, but this is just so beautiful. And then the detail that sent me on a whole rabbit trail. Um, so it says, presented to Mabel Hillier for Attendance and Progress, Christmas 1908. And this was the council school in Castlethorpe. Uh, Stony Stratford. So I went on an entire journey on the internet tracking down Mabel Hillier and I was able to find some interesting information. Uh, her father was a woodworking machinist. Uh, I found that out from his census um, and she had two sisters. Her two sisters both married and I'm pretty sure uh, neither of them had children and they lived in the same area their whole lives. Mabel never married and for much of her adult life she moved about what would be an hour's drive away. She died in 1987 but then in her older years she came back to live close to her sisters and that's where she died and I thought what was it that drew her away for most of her adult life? What was her job? But I just wasn't able to find any more information. It will always be a mystery to me um, and yeah, found uh, a letter that she wrote to her grandfather uh, and it was on a kind of like local town council's website. So it was fascinating. Um, and it's just always such a cool thing to me about used books. Who else has held this in their hands and has delighted in the story um, and been taken with it? So this book is not even on Project Gutenberg. If I like it, I am considering taking the time to 
put it up on Project Gutenberg. So there is a whole process that you can do. And I thought, I want other people to be able to access this if it is good. Um, so let me just find you before I close the video, an illustration. Here we go. So the illustrations were definitely made later on, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because it says, I think that says 1907. So um, here is one picture. So I think this is supposed to be a bit melodramatic, which is kind of honestly like some of my favorite kind of Victorian literature. Um, I think there's maybe five illustrations total. I found one more to show you. And I think that looks so Lark Rise to Candleford. So that is my very Victorian book haul. I hope that you all enjoyed it. And I hope that you all have a great rest of your day. And Victober is coming. It's so very close. I cannot wait to celebrate it with all of you. I have a lot of fun coming for you up ahead. So many videos, so many fun videos. So thank you as always uh, for just being such a lovely audience to interact with. And I will be back with another video soon. Bye.